If you guys remember back in October, 2023, I made this video on all the new features of InDesign 2024 that are about to come out. Now, while Photoshop and Illustrator were basking in the glory of AI movement and AI technology with their new text to image, text to vectors, all we really got in InDesign was textiles, which is cool, but not as flashy as any of the other ones. And today while I was editing on the layout for you guys, I saw this little pop-up around my cursor that said, hey, try a new text to image generator native to InDesign. So I was like, oh my God, it's finally coming. It's finally here. AI in InDesign is here. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to incorporate into your workflow to save a bunch of time. What are the boundaries of what it can do and cannot do? And also how to save these actual images onto your computer so you can link them in anything else or you wanna save them for later. Super versatile, super excited. Let's get into it. All right, now that we are in InDesign, all we have to do is go up to Window, go down to Text to Image Beta, and then this window will pop up, and this is where all the magic happens. So on the top, you can see that there is a prompt. This is where you type in your text in order to generate the image. Here, you can choose between a photo or an art piece. So we're gonna test this out just in just a little bit, but the ability for us to choose between these two, I think is really nice. You can also change the aspect ratio, and I like how they made everything really user-friendly as opposed to something like Midjourney where you kind of have to do things a lot more manual. So I think Adobe Firefly did a great job with that. Okay, and here you can see that they give you actually a bunch of sample prompts. So you can click on any one of these and then it'll start generating a new AI image for you. Now, once it's done, it's going to show up right here. So your top three are going to be your most recent and all the other ones are going to be underneath it. You can see that I've already tried with a bunch of other ones just to see how it's going to be working. Hey everyone, thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys are still looking to get InDesign, I have a affiliate link down in the description for all of the Adobe Clouds. For students, I think it's $19.99, which is a great deal. And if you wanna support the channel, make sure you get that in the link below. And I also wanted to say that I have some people in my life that are having a hard time finding a job right now. So I've uploaded a free InDesign template for resumes. Uh, all you have to do is go to my website, a pop-up will come up. You just have to tell it the email to send it to and it'll send it straight to you, all for free. I hope you guys the best of luck out there and let's get back into the video. Now, the next step after we've actually generated the image is to put it into something. Now, for most of us, what we're going to do is go over here to the rectangular frame tool, drag a shape that we want or maybe you already have something like this made. And now that we have this frame selected, we just have to click on one of these images. You can see that it populates this frame right away. And if you click on any of the other generations, you can also input them into this as well. So this is great if you're looking for a certain image and you just wanna put something in. So this also works with more complex frames like our compound frame that we made a couple of videos ago in this tutorial. Now, all you have to do is click on the compound frame, add an image to it, and you can see that it's gonna behave exactly like how it would if you just put an image in any other way. You can do things like rotate it, you can fit it, so right click, and if I wanna fit this content proportionally, you can see it can do that. I can also move it around to place it a place where I think would fit the best. And yeah, I think it just speeds up your workflow a ton, especially if you're trying to look for the perfect image with the perfect colors. Okay, next let's test out how it actually performs. So if you guys remember this original layout, the image on the left was of a man in a very dramatic pose and the image on the right side is going to be Antelope Canyon. Now, both of these images I chose because they had a orange hue, which balances the blue bubbles that I have going on on the page. So let's see how it does when I try to mimic something like that. So on the left, we have our original image from Rafael Cirquiera, and we're trying to mimic this onto our layouts on the right. So I'm gonna try my best to describe this man on the left. Let's see how it does in mimicking the same effect. Okay, so these are the three images that are generated for me. For some reason, they all seem to be building a, a home of some sort, although I don't think I put that in my prompt, but nevertheless, they look really nice. They look nicely generated. They have that window in the background, the white walls that I asked for, the wooden floors, and the overall that is orange. So I think it did a pretty good job. It's a pretty realistic image. Now let's see how it does when I try to make this into an artwork. Okay, so these are the three artworks that it gave me. Now, 
I found with Firefly that it's usually not amazing with faces and eyes especially, and you'll see what I mean if I just scroll between the three. Uh, I mean, this is just not it. But other than that, I think it did a really good job of actually making this happen. Okay, this is the one I'm gonna plug into the page on the left. On the right, we're gonna type in Antelope Canyon with orange hues. I'm gonna make it into a portrait as well and let's see what it makes for us. Okay, I would say this one, it did an amazing job at actually generating what we wanted. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that right there. That looks perfect. So let me know what you guys think. Is this like a super versatile tool or would you guys probably not use this as much as you think you will? Now, the last thing I wanna show you guys is how to actually export these images that you generated onto your computer or save it locally. So we know that these are going to be links. So if I select this photo, and I go into the links panel, you can see that it's right here, generative AI image 28. So if I wanna save this image, all I have to do is copy links to, and then I can save it on my desktop. So here you can see that it's copying the link. So here if I open my document explorer and I go to my desktop, you can see that the image is right here. It's gonna live right on my desktop and I can save it and reuse it whenever I need to. So I think that's a super cool feature and I'll definitely augment our workflow a lot. And that's it, now you know how to use text to image in InDesign to speed up your workflow. So let me know what you guys think. Is this a really good addition for InDesign or is this more of a gimmick where they basically pluck the text to image generator from Photoshop and just toss it into InDesign? Nevertheless, I thought it was a great, great feature to implement and it'll definitely help speed up the workflow of a lot of people. I hope you guys learned something new today. If you did, please don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.